Welcome back. So, this is the math dealer here, and we're talking about the nth derivative of some trig functions. The nth derivative of trig functions, okay? So, I'm not getting all crazy. I'm not going to be like, oh, let's go find the nth derivative of secant, something like that. No, we're talking about sines and cosines, just keeping it simple, right? So, basically, it starts out like this. Let's say y is equal to the sine of x. And let's say you're asked to find like the 30th derivative, right, of sine. Because you know as calc teachers, we do that to you, right? So basically what you want to do is just start off by just getting the pattern going. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine, of course, is negative sine. The derivative of sine is back to cosine. The negative's hanging around for the party. But the fourth derivative, derivative of cosine, is a negative sine, which brings me right back to the sine of x. So if you notice here, the pattern goes, I'm going to get right back to the sine function every four derivatives. Does that make sense? So you know the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, but the fourth derivative, I get right back to the original function, which means I have a cycle here, right? I've got kind of a pattern building. So every fourth derivative, I'm right back to the sine function. So if I was trying to find like the, deriv the 24th derivative, well, since 24 is divisible by four, I know the 24th derivative is gonna be the sine of x, all right? But if I was looking for like the, what did I say, the 30th derivative, remember that one? So I said, what's the 30th derivative? Well, you know the 28th derivative would put me right down here at the sine. So that's gonna make this the 29th derivative, and which makes negative sine x the 30th derivative. So you see how the pattern is just building. Once you get the first four, then you can decide what the rest of them are gonna be like, just depending on what is, if that number is divisible by four. So let's throw up the cosine. I mean, not throw up like pew, because that's just gross. All right, so here we go. Y prime, negative sine y double prime, negative cosine, y triple prime, sine x, and y fourth, y, y fourth, the fourth derivative of um, cosine gives me just good old fashioned cosine x. So notice again, every fourth derivative, I'm back to the original function. So which means that if I was looking for the, the hundredth derivative of cosine x, yep, you got it. Since 100 is divisible by 4, evenly, of course, I'm going to be right back to the beginning. Now, what sometimes might happen is we, you know, as calc teachers are, we might throw something in with that argument. So in other words, I'm going to give you an inside derivative, but you're not scared. No siree. Follow the pattern. Y prime, we know is cosine of 3x, but don't forget the inside derivative has to pop out. You can't be forgetting about them y double prime. Again, inside derivative better pop out. That gives me 3 squared. Derivative of cosine you all know and love to be negative sine. Argument stays the same. y triple prime. The inside derivative has to pop out. That gives me 3 cubed. Negative hanging around for the party. And of course derivative of sine is cosine. And then y fourth derivative gives me 3 to the 4th, because again, the inside derivative has to pop out. Derivative of cosine is positive, is a negative sign, so he turns positive. And like we just said, it's a positive sign. It's a negative sign, so he's there. Now check it out. I am literally back to what I started with in a multiplier of 3, which is my inside derivative, raised to the 4th power. So if my power is, let's say my power is and n, then that power of 3, the inside derivative, is also being raised to the nth power. So what I mean by that is, let's say I was trying to find the 27th derivative, right? So my 27th derivative is going to be 3 to the 27th power. Now mind you, 27 is not divisible by 4, but 28 is. You follow me? So this is 1 short of 28. So that's why it's going to end up being a negative cosine of 3x. 
So it's through negative 3 to the 27th power times the cosine of 3x. The negative came from this guy because, remember, if I was looking for the 28th derivative, right here, baby, right? It would have been 3 to the 28th, the sine of 3x. Since I was looking for the 27th derivative, I'm just one shy of it, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, and I hope that that works out for you. Go ahead and try one on your own. You can make up any one, right? You could be like, y equals the cosine of 7x. Find the, I don't know, 101st derivative. Fair enough? So you know the pattern, right? You know how the pattern's going to be. y prime is going to give me the negative sine 7x with a 7 out front. y double prime is going to give me a negative 7 squared with the sine, oh, I lied, the cosine, sorry about that, of 7x. y triple prime will give me a positive 7 cubed sine 7x, which brings me right back to the beginning. The derivative of sine, of course, is cosine, and you get 7x. So if I was looking for the 101st, well, you know the 100th derivative is sitting down here. It's going to be 7 to the 100th power cosine of 7x. And since I want the 101st, I'm going right back to this guy. So it ends up being 7 to the 101, negative because we have a negative in the pattern, times the sine of 7x. All right. So hopefully this makes sense, and it's just a quick little review on that nth derivative thing. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day, and good luck on all those tests or exams or whatever's coming up out there in that college world. All right, this is the Math Dealer, signing out.